السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah to bless them and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. I'm sure the first fast of this beautiful month of Ramadan has gone by very smoothly, very, very little in terms of hours in this part of the world compared to Europe and the other countries who are going through approximately 18 hours of fasting compared to our 12 little hours, if really 12. May Allah protect us. It's actually less than that. This evening, inshallah, we will be speaking for 30 minutes. And from this evening, it will be 30 minutes every single day. Yesterday, we were on a V6 engine, as you recall. And therefore, we had prolonged slightly, obviously, the first night of Ramadan. May Allah bless us. So let's dive straight into the topic. Pearls of peace from the noble Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that he will test every single one of us with different types of tests. So in verse number 155 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ We will definitely test every single one of you. With what? With a little bit of fear. Sometimes we will be scared. Fear may overtake us. Sometimes hunger and loss of wealth. Perhaps you may suffer loss. Things may burn down, sometimes in a different way. You may not have enough wealth. And then Allah says, and sometimes loss of life. Those around you, those whom you love the most, you may lose them, your children, your spouse. Sometimes your parents, your brothers and sisters, those who are dear to you, young and old. And Allah says, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, may Allah protect us all. Loss of produce. Sometimes you find those who are farming, the produce is less, and sometimes the crop in the country is so low that it affects the economy. So who will have peace in that instance? If we are definitely going to be tested, the only ones who will have peace are those who bear patience. Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Give good news to those who bear patience, those who accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those whom when calamity strikes, Difficulty comes in their direction. They are quick to say, Indeed, we belong to Allah, and unto Him is our ultimate return. Subhanallah. So every one of us has a lesson to learn from this, that we belong to Allah. Something strikes you, say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And move further. You will achieve a lot of peace. But if you are a person who's not prepared to be tested, how then can we deserve the akhirah? How is Allah going to distinguish the believer from the disbeliever? If we are not prepared to be tested, what then do we expect? It's like going to school and come time for examination. We say, I'm walking out. I don't want to be tested. You've wasted your seven years in primary. You've wasted your four to five years in high school because you don't want to be tested. May Allah protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how important it is to eat that which is halal and to be thankful to Allah. If you do these two things, you will achieve a lot of peace. Remember, peace is achieved from many angles and aspects. 
Sometimes our peace is snatched away from a certain angle, but not from the other angles. So the Quran holistically deals with every form of peace. And this is why when we look at the rules and regulations, we should know if we follow them, we will achieve that wholesome peace. And if we don't, the peace is snatched away according to how much we have not obeyed the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Verse number 172, Surah Al-Baqarah. O oh, you who believe, eat from the pure that Allah has provided you. Stay away from that which is impure, not halal, not permissible. And what you should do when you eat that which is pure, be thankful to Allah. If you are truly the worshippers of Allah, thank Allah. Allah has provided us with food and drink. People are suffering because they don't have water to drink. With us, we open the tap and that water is fit to drink. May Allah protect us. May he grant us goodness. May he make us thankful. The more you thank Allah, the more peace you have because you will be able to appreciate the gifts of Allah upon you. Then he says, stay away from haram. <laughs> Indeed, what has been made prohibited upon you is the dead, the carrion as well as blood, flowing blood, as well as the flesh of a swine, as well as that which has been dedicated to those besides Allah. The name of other than Allah is mentioned upon it. It is slaughtered for others besides Allah. Do not eat it. It is impure. These are just some of the list of that which is unacceptable. If we are to eat that which is haram, it will affect our whole system, inshallah, in a few moments we will see when we speak about interest and riba, how it affects our system. Then the beautiful mention is made of the month of fasting. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an nas The month we are in right now, Allah makes mention of it, the only month of the calendar, the Muslim calendar, that is mentioned in this way, Shahru Ramadan in the Quran. The month of Ramadan, what a blessing. A month of peace and guidance. Allah says it is the month in which the book of guidance and peace was revealed. It was sent down, subhanallah. And this is why in this month, we dedicate specific times of the day for the Quran. We want to listen to the entire recitation in Salatul Taraweeh. We try not to compromise the clarity of the recitation and the public should try to look for a place where they can read Taraweeh in such a way that they can hear every single letter being recited. MashaAllah, in this beautiful city of Cape Town, the city of the Qurra, the city of the Quran, you won't find it so difficult to do that. It's quite simple to go to the masajid where you will hear every letter clearly. Sadly, in some places, they don't even have that opportunity. So make the most of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon us. When we fast for the sake of Allah, we will achieve lots of inner peace. Our health is improved. We detoxify ourselves. Detoxification physically as well as spiritually. Physically in the sense that from a medical aspect, it is confirmed that fasting is so healthy for you and it achieves a lot for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. A lot of us, when we want to lose weight, what we do? We stay away from some food. Allah gives you one month, one whole month. You can get back into your shape, my brothers and sisters, subhanallah. Sadly with us, that's when all the fries and the pies come in. And all those words, they are not good for us, to be honest with you. Let's not say the savories themselves. When I spoke about it a few days ago, one uncle actually came to me and said, Hey, you. I said, Hey, I'm not a parrot. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> he told me, No, you be careful. Our wives are so excited when you told them that don't go for the savories and all the pies. But we need them. That's the only month we get to eat them. <laughs> so I said, Okay, I'll declare it in public. Allah protect us.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful month of Ramadan. It is not a month of food and drink. It is a month of no food and drink. Subhanallah. Don't make it your habit to spoil yourself in the evening so badly that you make it difficult on the women folk. Instead of ibadah, they are busy cooking. And we con them that to cook is a great ibadah. Yes, it may be. It is a great ibadah to cook, but up to a certain limit. When we're wasting our time decorating the food and putting little dots of chocolate on the plate itself that no one's going to eat, only look at. If that's the case, it's a waste. In fact, it is sinful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how close he is. You want to achieve peace, you need to know how close your maker is to you. Look at how we looked at the fasting. Fasting gives you inner and outer peace, physical health, spiritual health. We'll go through it through the month of Ramadan, inshallah. But let's take a look at a powerful point being raised here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَان فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Verse number 186 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when my worshippers ask you about me, tell them that I am very, very close. If you feel the closeness of Allah, you achieve peace. It protects you from evil. It gives you the hope. It makes you a person who's looking forward to worshipping Allah, who's looking forward to seeking forgiveness. Any problem you have, who do you call out to first? Allah. Who do you call out to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this verse continues where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being instructed to tell us, I respond, meaning Allah is saying, I respond to every caller as he calls. Imagine every one of us at the same time calling for different things. Allah hears everyone and responds to everyone at the same moment and the time. Amazing. Allahu Akbar. Each one of us has different issues. Some have even the medical issues. Everyone has a unique medical condition. May Allah grant us cure. And may he have rahmah on those who've passed away. So my brothers and sisters, never underestimate calling out to Allah. Like we said yesterday, the month of Ramadan, when we get up, we are getting up with the intention of suhoor in the morning. That is the blessed moment. Spend some time, call out to Allah. He is near. That's what he says. I am very near. I respond to the call of every caller when he calls out. May Allah's blessings be upon us. So don't underestimate the power of dua. It is indeed the ingredient of inner peace. Continue calling. Repeat your dua. Draw a list of your dua. Keep on saying it again and again. A year, two years, three years. Like we said yesterday, you will be ticking off your list as time passes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Part of the gift of Allah is he keeps us in need. If we were not in need, one wonders whether we would have turned to Allah or not. So the gift of Allah is when you're in need, you turn to your maker, you come to prayer, you abstain from sin, you make promises to Allah. Allah says, my worshiper, I love you so much. I made you in need because I was waiting for you to come to me. When you had no need, you were not coming to me. We love you so much. Look at your condition. You are crying. Your tears are rolling. Your heart is soft. Allahu Akbar. We wanted this condition, so we kept you in need. May Allah fulfill our needs. Then Allah warns us. You know bribery, how bad it is? It is made mention of in Surah Al-Baqarah. If a person wants to lose his peace, he needs to make bribery the order of the day. The worst thing is to accept the bribe. That is worse than even giving it. One wonders why. Sometimes it is your right and people are not giving it to you. You go to some countries in the world where you're right, they won't. They'll tell you there is a page missing. What's the page missing? In my country, they call it a green page. A green page, the color of the currency, missing. They'll stop you and tell you, why were you speaking on your mobile phone? Instead of telling them, I've forgotten my mobile phone at home, you can search my whole car, you've got to say, sorry, sir. That's it. Even though you know you don't have your phone. Why? They're looking for something. If that is the case and corruption overtakes society, society is destroyed. Corruption is a disease that will usurp the rights of those whom those rights belong to. May Allah protect us, really. We need to safeguard ourselves. If a person is taking a bribe that is haram on haram on haram for you, 
totally prohibited. If someone is forced to give a bribe in order to receive their due right as a last resort because they are being oppressed, although it is sinful both to give and to receive, the receiver carries the bigger burden because he is the one who is encouraging it. May Allah protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ Do not consume the wealth of one another unjustly, unfairly, incorrectly. Do not eat the wealth of one another. Be fair in business. You want peace? Be straightforward. Tell them, this car, I'm selling it to you. It looks brand new. It's been damaged once. Jazakallah khair. Don't lie to people. Brand new, no damage, no nothing. Later on, they see the CV joints are messed. Something else is knocked. This has happened. They will curse you and curse you and curse you. Your peace is gone. Why? Because you lied. Someone sells you a product and they are lying to you. You know what? This is the cheapest you're ever going to get. Down the road, you get it 30 rands cheaper. What's going to happen? Minimum, you're going to say, Allah, destroy that man. Where did your peace go? For 30 rands, you sold it. For a hundred rands you sold it. For a thousand rands you sold it. Someone cursed you. May Allah protect us. So when you do a deal, do a good deal so that you will achieve peace. Look at the pearls of peace from the Quran. Our daily lives are affected by what is being said in the Quran. So Allah says, Continuation of the same verse. Where Allah says, Do not use that wealth to... Pay to those in authority in order to usurp the rights of someone. Mentioning the bribe. May Allah protect us and grant us goodness. Then something extremely important. Let's open our ears and listen. Do you want peace? Stop smoking. It will save you so much money. Look at everyone looking at me. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? You want peace? You want to save money? You want inner peace, outer peace? Stop smoking. This is the least we can do. Subhanallah. Save your money, save your health. Do you know what Allah says? Subhanallah. Verse number 195. Spend in the path of Allah and do not throw yourselves into your own destruction. Never ever harm yourselves. Neither with your wealth, nor with whatever you do. Don't harm yourself. So what this means is, that wealth, you'd rather spend it in the cause of Allah. Give a poor person, you are building your palace in the akhirah. But you spend it on that which is harmful to your health, you are messing your own health. Really? I wanted to say something. In fact, let's say it. One wonders what type of a spouse, or what the spouse would feel to say, my man is a smoker. I wonder what a non-smoker's kiss is like. May Allah protect us. You can go back home tonight and you can say, I've quit. Don't worry. One year from now, you'll know. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's a crisis. Believe me, worse than the smoker are those who live with the smoker. I've said it and I've laid it bare. We're in Cape Town, so it's fine, inshallah. <laughs> this is a bad habit. And I've only picked on one thing. You can draw that example for any other thing that is harmful to you, that you know is harmful. Cut it out, throw it out. It will save your health, it will save your wealth, and it will save much more. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks so beautifully of Hajj and Umrah. <laughs> Complete the Hajj and the Umrah for the sake of Allah. Look, we've spoken about Ramadan. Immediately after Ramadan, the months of Hajj commence, right? So now when the months of Hajj commence, if Hajj is compulsory upon you, make an effort to go. There was a time when in this country, no matter how many wanted to go, they could go. Those days are gone. Today you need to apply. You're lucky if your name comes through. This year, they gave a refund to so many people because they had to cut numbers due to construction happening in the holy masjid. May Allah protect us all and take us there repeatedly. If you have wealth, the best place you could go to is take your children and your family to Mecca and Medina. Subhanallah. Let them see the bond. Let them see the masajid. Let them see the link. Let them feel the spirituality of the holiest shrines of Islam. Subhanallah. Instead of visiting every single time Hawaii and Honolulu. And what happens? We don't even know what Mecca is like. Our children have never been there. They've never tasted the spirituality. But you had wealth, my brother, my sister. Make it your business to go there as often as you can. May Allah protect us. Obviously, this is for those who can manage. If you cannot manage, make dua. A miracle can come in your direction. 
May Allah grant us peace. The area of peace on this globe, the most blessed land, Mecca, and thereafter, al Madinatul Munawwara. The most peaceful. In fact, Ibrahim alayhi salam made a dua for this place, and that dua was accepted. Our hearts are stuck to that place. They all yearn for that place. May Allah grant us the ability to go there time and again. Then Allah makes mention of the types of dua to make, and I need to spend a moment on this. Because some people only ask Allah for goodness in this world. فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقٍ People make dua to Allah, oh Allah, give me goodness, give me wealth, give me health, give me a good family, give me children, give me this. But what about asking for the life after death? You've forgotten. You've forgotten to ask about that which is coming more than 70 years down the line or even less. Forgot. So Allah says, don't do that. The way Allah has mentioned this in these beautiful verses of the Quran, verse number 201 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah says, the true people are those who make dua for this world, goodness in it, as well as goodness in the life after death, as well as savior from the punishment of the fire. We should know how to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, when someone corrects you, don't feel bad. If you feel bad, your peace is snatched away. Someone tells you, brother, you are wrong. My sister, this is something that is not supposed to be the case. And we get excited, we get angry. Allah describes certain types of people when it comes to verse number 206 of the surah. Allah says, Such people, when it is told to them, fear Allah. They are given advice. They are told what to do and what not to do. Correct. They become proud and arrogant in their sin and they do it with their noses up. Allah says, those people, what do they deserve besides hellfire? People are telling you, correcting you. Thank them. Even if you are weak, you need to acknowledge you were wrong. So my brothers and sisters, let's start a trend. When we are corrected, acknowledge that we are wrong. Correct the error. Don't feel bad. You know, in Taraweeh, sometimes the Imam errs for many reasons, human beings. When you are corrected, never feel bad. If an imam feels bad and stops talking to those behind him because they've corrected him, wallahi, he's lost the plot. And the same applies to every one of us. This is life. You live it once, live it correctly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how sometimes there are good things in life that we love. We think they are good. They're not good for us. And sometimes there are things that are bad. Or should I say, things that we think are bad, they are good for us. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 216. There is a chance that there are certain things that you detest, but they are good for you. And certain things you love, but they are bad for you. Allah knows you do not know. So what we do, we make dua, we try to achieve what we want. When Allah has kept it away, thank Him. Thank Allah for having kept it away. It's peace that you will get in your heart. You know, sometimes people say that I want to achieve this and I want to get it. I'm making dua, but Allah is not giving it to me. And I asked Allah to do what is best, but he's not giving it to me. Listen to that statement. I asked Allah to do what is best, but he is not giving it to me. That's a statement of hypocrisy. Because that means you asked Allah to do what you believe is best, not what Allah knows is best. There's a difference. If you're asking Allah, please do for me what you know is best. In that case, when it doesn't come in your direction, that was best for you. Long term, better for you. May Allah protect us and grant us goodness. And this is why immediately after that, Allah makes mention of, or a few verses later, Allah speaks of alcohol and how bad it is. They ask you about khamr. They ask you about khamr and gambling. 
These intoxicants, we will inshallah talk about them some other day in a bit more detail. Very bad. They take away your peace. They take away your wealth. They are bad for you. The same applies to gambling. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something that a lot of us lose our peace after engaging in. You know, when we talk to each other, someone says, brother, I'm getting married. Before we used to say, mashallah, alhamdulillah, I'm excited for you. Now you say, brother, are you sure you're making the right move? My sister, are you sure everything is okay? Are you happy? Are you definitely okay? Times have changed. People get married and become sadder than they were before nowadays. Why? Because we're all heading in different directions. If you're aiming for Allah, nothing will go wrong. But we're not aiming for Allah anymore. So let's go back. Look at nikah. Allah says, وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنْ Subhanallah. Verse number 221 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah says, Do not marry the polytheist women until they accept Islam. Until they believe. And Allah says, وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ And a slave who is a believer is better than those free women who are polytheists, even if you are impressed by those, by the latter. Now, why is this being made mention of? It is showing us you need to be on par. You want your marriage to work? Marry someone. When someone comes to you and you are satisfied with their level of spirituality and their level of character and conduct, let them get married. Don't block, don't stop, don't be an obstacle. But if the level of spirituality, meaning the deen, is not good enough and the character is not good enough, opt for something better. Get something better. It's better for you and your children in the long run. It's better for your happiness. People are excited. I'm getting married, you know. But if you're marrying the wrong person, wallahi, a year down the line, you'll have gloves and you will need training. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us goodness. So you want peace? Make the right choice of a spouse. Take your time about it, my brothers and sisters. You want peace in your life and your future? Make the right decision when it comes to marriage. Immediately after the verses of marriage, Allah speaks of divorce. How to divorce a woman? You need to know before you marry. Because it's like a gun that you have. You've owned it and you don't know what the trigger is all about. So you face it in your own head and you say, what's this trigger? You start pulling it. Wallahi, your brains will be blown out the other way. Why? Because you don't know what the trigger is all about and you want to own a gun. You want to get married and you don't know what divorce is all about. You need to make sure you know, do not utter the words. Allah speaks about how to issue the talaq. We should go through the verses of the Quran and attend the lessons in our masajid that teach us about this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about how we should never be an obstacle when people want to get married and there's nothing wrong in them getting married. Today, people look at a caste, a race, a clan, a this, a that. You look at the deen, you look at the character. If the people are of a high standing status in those terms, you immediately accept. If they are acceptable, you do not become an obstacle. But if you want to lose your peace, all you've got to do is when your child comes up with some proposition that is reasonably acceptable, say, no, I don't want. Your peace is gone, your child's peace is gone. They will elope, they will go, and you are a person who's lost in every single way, and that's it. If the person's credentials are okay, reasonable, say okay, fine, it might not be to your liking, but get them married, do not be an obstacle. Even if your daughter has been divorced by a man once or twice, one talaq or two talaqs, and thereafter she wants to get back to him, the Quran says, وَلَا تَعْضُلُونَ in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا Do not be an obstacle if they want to return to their ex-spouses if they were divorced with one or two talaqs. The minute they were issued with three, then that is not an option until they marry someone else and those rules are further, uh, inshallah, we may come to them later on in Ramadan. If not, we will learn them from the scholars around us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, I want to end with this point, inshallah, in fact, one or two more points that I want to make mention of seeing that we already clocked 29 minutes. My brothers and sisters, let's listen very carefully. When we spend in the path of Allah, Allah is saying spend in the path of Allah, but do not waste it by bragging 
and by being harmful, hurting people. Don't. Do not hurt people. So if you are going to spend in the path of Allah, spend, mashallah. Allah says, Spend in the path of Allah as much as you can. Give, but do not spoil the reward. Do not nullify your charities. Nullify your charities by bragging about it and by harming the people whom you've been charitable to. So you, you are charitable to someone and you think you own them. You are spending your wealth and you brag about it everywhere. Allah says your reward is nullified. We don't need it. We want people who spend and they are humble. Allah says you spend but be humble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and open our doors. So that was verse number 264. And Allah says when you are giving, don't give the worst of your wealth. In a way that if someone were to give that to you, you wouldn't even take it. So some people, when they want to calculate their zakah, they check the dead stock, that which doesn't move, you know. Those old Nokias which are no longer operational, those bricks, they take out 20 of them and say, here's my zakat. But nobody's going to use them. It's going to be in some village. People will put them up to say, these are little souvenirs of long. Allahu Akbar. That's not good enough. May Allah protect us and grant us goodness. The last point, and I promise that this is something extremely important. We need peace. Make sure that we do not consume interest and we do not get involved in interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in such a way. He says, If you are not going to quit on interest and its consumption, then you should know war has been announced against you from Allah and his messenger. Verse number 279. Why? Interest loans and getting involved in interest makes the rich richer, the poor poorer. You get involved in it, you lose. At some point in time, you will lose. You <coughs> perhaps may lose so much, become depressed. And in that particular case, what would happen? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not snatch our peace away. You want peace? Be happy with your financial condition. You cannot afford a big house? Stay in a smaller one. You cannot afford to buy a house? Stay in a rented property. You cannot afford so many thousand rental? Live in a property that is less in terms of rental. You cannot afford to eat out every now and again? Do not eat out. You cannot afford meat? So eat vegetables. Allahu Akbar. Learn to be happy with your financial condition. Whatever status you are upon, be happy with it. Make dua that Allah give you more, but don't spend before you earn. You are jumping the gun. If that's the case, there will come a day when you will be totally depressed. Do you know majority of those who have taken loans on interest and so on, they are struggling to pay so much so that they come back depressed completely with their homes torn apart. And yet they are living the high life without realizing my peace is gone. I'd rather be in a hut or under a tree. But with that condition of peace, these are the pearls of peace in the Quran. Are we ready to accept them? Are we ready to adopt this? Especially when it comes to our financial condition, brothers and sisters, do not overspend. Don't try and boast and show that you are on a high financial level when you are not. Simplify your life. Cut it down. Save money and you will lead such a happy life. Learn to spend and give the poor. Reach out and you will find those pearls of peace will be found in your entire system. May Allah grant us goodness wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdih subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka